Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1.5, Multiplication Patterns. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you use a basic fact and a pattern to multiply by a two-digit number? Now, let's go ahead and open up in our GoMath workbooks to page 11, and let's get started. Now, let's start out by taking a look at question number one. For question one, they give us a problem, and that problem is 8 times 3 equals 24. Now what I'm going to do is this. That 8 times 3 equals 24 is called our basic fact. So I'm going to write down basic fact next to the 24. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use our basic facts in this lesson and a pattern to help us find our products. So what I want to point out next is this. In the next part of the problem, they take our 8 times 3 but this time they're going to multiply it by the first power of 10. Now what I want to point out to you is this. When I multiply by the first power of 10, that means my exponent is a 1. And what happens is, I'm going to take my 24, which was my product from my basic fact problem, and to that 24, we're going to add 1, 0. So my exponent is a 1, and I've now added 1, 0 to my 24. Now, let's take a look at the second part of this problem. This time, they take 8 times 3, and they multiply it by the second power of 10. Well, in this part of the problem, my exponent is a 2. So what I notice now is, to my 24, they've now added two zeros. Here's 1, and here's 2. Now, let's take a look at the next part in this pattern. They now give us 8 times 3, and this time we're going to multiply it by the third power of 10. So what I know is this time my exponent is a 3, and when I look at my product, I know that I now have three zeros in my product. So that's how I'm going to use a basic fact and a pattern to find a product. Now, let's take a look at question number two together. Once again, our job is to use mental math to complete the pattern. Well, for question number two, they give us, first of all, 5 times 6. And what I know is, I know that 5 times 6 is going to give me 30. So I'm going to write down 30 as the answer to my multiplication problem as the product. Now, what happens is, this 5 times 6 equals 30, that becomes my basic fact. So I'm going to make a little note of that right out next to my 30. That is my basic fact. Now, I'm going to use that basic fact and a pattern to find my product. Now, in the next step, they give me 5 times 6, and this time it's times the first power of 10. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to write down the product of 5 times 6, which was 30. So I'm going to start out with my 30. That's the product to my basic fact. And I know that my exponent here is a 1. So what that means is, I'm going to add 1, 0 to my basic fact, and I now have 300. Now, let's try this again. For the next part in my pattern, they once again give me 5 times 6. This time, it's times the second power of 10. So what I know is, I know that this time, I have an exponent of 2. Well, I'm going to start out once again by writing down the product of my basic fact, which was 30. And I know that to that, this time, I have to add two zeros because, once again, my exponent is a 2. So my product here turns out to be 3,000. Now, let's try this one more time. I have, once again, my 5 times 6. This time, I'm going to multiply it by the third power of 10. So I know that here, my exponent is a 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the product of my basic fact, which was 30. And to that 30, I'm going to add three zeros. So here's 1, 2, 3. I'm going to place my comma, and that turns out to be 30,000. So I now have used my basic fact and a pattern to find the product. Now, let's check out question number four together. Our job, once again, is to use mental math to complete the pattern, but question number four looks a little bit different than the past two. This time, we're missing the first factor in our multiplication problem. So we have blank times four equals 28. 
Well, what I know is, in my knowledge of multiplication facts, I know that 7 times 4 is going to give me 28. And what I also know is, that is my basic fact. So I'm going to once again make a little note that 7 times 4 equals 28 is my basic fact. So what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to look at the next part in the pattern. Well, this time they give me 7 times 4 times blank equals 280. So what I don't know this time is, I don't know the power of 10. But what I do know is this. When I look at my product, I see that behind my 28, there is 1, 0. So if I know that there's 1, 0 behind that 28, I know that I should be writing down the first power of 10. Because once again, my exponent should match the number of zeros in my product. So if my exponent is a 1, there's going to be 1, 0 behind the 28. So I know that my missing number is the first power of 10. Now let's take a look at the next step in the pattern. Once again, they give me 7 times 4 times blank equals 2,800. So once again, I'm missing my power of 10. Well, what I know is this. When I look at my product, now remember, the basic fact is 28. When I look at my product, and in this case it's 2,800, I see that there are two zeros behind the 28. So what I know is, in order to complete my pattern, I'm going to have to write down the second power of 10. Because once again, my exponent should match the number of zeros in my product, and if my exponent is a 2, I should have two zeros, so I have one, two, so I know that I'm on the right track. Now, let's take a look at the last part in this pattern. They give me 7 times 4 times blank equals 28,000. So once again, I'm missing the power of 10. But what I do know is this. I know that 28 was the answer to my basic fact, and I see that behind that 28, there are three zeros. So I know that if there's three zeros, my missing part to this problem should be the third power of 10. Because once again, my exponent should match my number of zeros in the product. So let's check and make sure. My exponent's a three, which means I should have three zeros in the product. So I have one, two, three, and I know that my answer checks out. Now, let's take a look at question number eight. Our job is to use mental math and a pattern to find the product. So for number eight, they give us eight times seven, and that's times the second power of 10. Well, what I need to establish first is this. I need to have my basic fact written down. So when I look at this problem, that eight times seven stands out to me. So what I'm gonna do first is this. I'm gonna write down eight times seven and establish my basic fact. Now, when I multiply 8 times 7, I know that the product should be 56. So that is my basic fact. Now, the next step I'm going to take is this. I'm going to come back to my 8 times 7, and I'm going to go ahead and put it inside the parentheses, and this time I'm going to multiply it by the first power of 10. And when I do that, I should be able to take my basic fact, which was 56, and I'm going to go ahead and write down 56, and I want you to remember, if it's the first power of 10 and my exponent is a 1, that means I'm going to add 1, 0 behind my 56. So I now have 560. Now I can't stop here though because we're looking at the second power of 10 here in the problem and I'm only at the first power of 10. So we're going to continue on with the pattern. I'm now going to write down 8 times 7 times the second power of 10, and once again, what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to write down the product of my basic fact, which was 56. Now, this time, my exponent is a 2. And if my exponent is a 2, that means I have to add two zeros behind the 56. So what I end up with is, I end up with 5,600. Now, let's check ourselves out. Up here, if it's 8 times 7 times the second power of 10, and I know that my exponent is a 2, in my product, there should also be two zeros. So let's come down here to our product, which was 5,600, and make our count. I see one, two zeros. 
So I know that my answer to this problem is going to turn out to be 5,600. Now, let's take a look together at question number 10. Once again, our job is to use mental math and a pattern to find the product. Now, for this problem, they give us 3 times 7 times the third power of 10. And once again, the first thing I need to do is I need to establish my basic fact. When I look at this problem, the part that stands out to me first is the 3 times 7. So I'm going to turn that into my basic fact. I'm going to write down 3 times 7, and I know that 3 times 7 takes me to 21. So that becomes my basic fact. Now, I'm going to use that basic fact and a pattern in order to complete this problem, in order to find the product. So let's continue on. I'm now going to write down my 3 times 7, and this time I'm going to multiply it by the first power of 10. And if I multiply that by the first power of 10, remember, the exponent is a 1, which means I'm going to add 1 zero to my product. So I'm going to write down my 21, but I'm going to add 1 zero to it, and that takes me to 210. Now, I have to continue on with my pattern because, once again, my exponent here is a 3. So we're going to continue on, and I'm going to write down, once again, 3 times 7, but this time I'm going to multiply it by the second power of 10. So I'm going to write down my basic fact product, which was 21, and I'm going to look at my exponent, which is a 2. That means I have to add two zeros. And when I add two zeros, that takes me to 2,100. Now, I still can't stop because, once again, my exponent here in the problem is a 3, so I need to continue on with my pattern. So I'm going to once again write down 3 times 7, and this time I'm going to multiply it by the third power of 10. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to go ahead and write down the product to my basic fact, which was 21, and I'm going to look at my exponent here, which this time is a 3. And if my exponent is a 3, that means I'm going to add three zeros to my product. That's now going to give me 21,000. Now, let's check ourselves and see if this works out. Back in the original problem, I multiplied 3 times 7 times the third power of 10. My exponent is a 3. That means I should have three zeros in my product. So let's come down here and make a count. I have one, two, three zeros. So what I know is, I know that my product for this problem is 21,000. Now, let's take a look at question number 16. It's one of our real world problem solving questions and it says, the Florida Everglades welcomes about two times the third power of 10 visitors per day. Based on this, about how many visitors come to the Everglades per week? So what I know is this. The Florida Everglades welcomes about two times the third power of 10 visitors per day, and they want to know about how many visitors come to the Everglades per week. So when we're talking about per week, we know that in one week, there are seven days. So what happens is this becomes seven times two times the third power of 10. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my basic fact and my patterns in order to solve this problem. So I first of all need to establish my basic fact. And in this problem, my basic fact is gonna be seven times two. Well, I know that 7 times 2 is going to give me 14. So what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to continue on with my pattern. I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply my 7 times 2 by the first power of 10. So I'm going to go ahead and write my 14 down, which was the product for my basic fact. And because my exponent is a 1, I'm going to add 1 zero to my 14, making that 140. Well, I can't stop yet because, once again, my exponent here is a 3. So I'm going to continue with my pattern. I'm going to write down 7 times 2, and I'm going to multiply that by now the second power of 10. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and write my 14 down, which was the product to my basic fact. This time, though, my exponent is a 2, which means I'm going to add two zeros to my 14, 
making that 1,400. Well, once again, I can't stop yet because my exponent here is a 3. So I'm going to continue on with my pattern, and I'm going to write down 7 times 2. This time I'm going to multiply it by the third power of 10. Well, once again, I'm going to write down the product to my basic fact, which was 14. Well, this time my exponent is a 3, which means I'm going to add 1, 2, 3 zeros. I'm going to plug in my comma, and that gives me 14,000. Now, let's check to see if this makes sense. In my problem, it's 7 times 2 times the third power of 10. My exponent is a 3, which means there should be three numbers in my product. So let's make a count. I have 1, 2, 3 zeros. So what I know is there are about 14,000 visitors at the Everglade per week, and that turns out to be the answer to my problem. Now, let's take a look at question number 17. It's another one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and it says, the average person loses about eight times the first power of 10 strands of hair each day. About how many strands of hair would the average person lose in nine days? Well, there's a couple of things that stand out to me. First of all, I know that the average person loses about eight times the first power of 10 strands of hair each day. Now, they want to know about how many strands of hair would the average person lose in nine days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write a problem down, and I'm going to make that 9 times 8 times the first power of 10. Now, I'm going to use my knowledge of basic fact and patterns in order to solve this problem. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to establish my basic fact, and what stands out to me is the 9 times 8. So I'm going to write down 9 times 8, and I know that 9 times 8 is going to give me 72. So I now have my basic fact. So what happens next is I'm going to start with my pattern. So I'm going to write down 9 times 8 times the first power of 10. What happens next is I'm going to write down my 72, which was the product for my basic fact, and I'm going to look back at my exponent. Well, in this part of the problem, my exponent is a 1. And if my exponent's a 1, that means I need to add 1 zero to my 72. And that gives me 720. Now, let's check this out. In my problem, my exponent here is a 1. It's 9 times 8 times the first power of 10. So if my exponent is a 1, there should be just 1 zero behind my product. So my answer of 720 is the correct answer. So we're going to circle that and I know that there's 720 strands of hair that the average person loses in nine days. Okay, let's take a look at our homework questions for tonight. I would like you to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found on page 12 in your GoMath workbook. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page you need to assess yourself and write your number down. Do you feel like you're number one a novice? number two, an apprentice, number three, a practitioner, or number four, an expert. Now, don't forget, your homework assignment for tonight will be questions number one and two, as well as numbers three through six, found on page 12 in your GoMath workbook. I hope you guys have a great evening, and I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.